We always wanted to put the heavyweight weapon system into this weight class, but there was no way to do it before because the weapon weighed so much. So when we saw the full walker bonus could get us up to 60 pounds, we knew we had to make this. Holy <laughs> What the hell did we do? I'm Adam Wrigley. I'm Matt Boris. And this is Drift. So we've been working on it nonstop since that announcement was made. We've had Walker plans in our team Slack under the channel Project Stupid for a long time. This was Project Stupid 2, uh, and here it is, Drip. <laughs> this is the first time we've really collaborated on a single robot. So there's a lot of matte details, there's a lot of atom details. It's a really interesting mismatch yes. of like our styles here. So Drift is similar to Chonky in that it is a friction-driven shell spinner. It's got these two wheels out here that drive the shell under this ring. It differs from Chonky in that these wheels are both independent suspensions. They both are spring-loaded. So they both apply about equal amounts of force into the shell and they're independent of each other. And our shell also is asymmetrical. We have a single tooth out here and a counterweight on the backside. And that'll help us maximize our bite. Since we're a walker, we can't drive as fast, so we want to maximize our bite. One of the biggest differences is that Chonky is a shuffler, so it weighs 45 pounds. We have a full walking system here, which means we weigh 60 pounds, so another 15 pounds heavier than Chonky, which will be a huge advantage in the arena as we face off against people. I believe to date, Drift will be the heaviest robot that's actually competed in an NHRL's cage. So the walking system is made up of 12 of these feet. You see three here, there's another three inboard, and then six on the other side. In order to be a walker and not a shuffler, one of the biggest differences is you can't have continuous motion of a motor mean forward. Our feet oscillate, so every time we walk, they're gonna shuffle back and forth. We call it the wiggler, and depending on which way we wiggle the feet, that, just, that depends which way we go. The feet have these little springs in them so that they can only apply force in one direction, and then when they go the other direction, they bend out of the way. So if we wanna go that way, the foot turns and pushes us that way. If we wanna go this way, the foot turns the other way and pushes that way. So depending on which way we wiggle the foot back and forth, that's the way that we end up going. The biggest goal here was something we've been trying to do for about seven years, which was take the weapon system out of a heavyweight robot, a 250 pound robot, and put it into a featherweight. This has the two motors from heavyweight emulsifier and the controllers running at the same voltage as heavyweight emulsifier. This is a heavyweight weapon system inside a featherweight, spinning a weapon that has a larger diameter than the heavyweight. So we, we got to test it in this cage because it's too dangerous for the normal safety cage. Holy sh Should I walk? It's... Careful, careful, careful. It walks better with the shell on, I'll be honest. I, I don't touch the... Let me get it up to speed, don't touch that. All right. Okay, I'm not walking anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna punch it. Punch it. That's okay. not gonna work. So we shouldn't punch it. Let me just feather it. Oh boy. We gotta really watch that. It's got too much torque. That's what happens when you have a heavyweight power system and a featherweight. <laughs> that might break after the first hit, but at least it's gonna work for a minute. <laughs> I, I, what do you think my heart rate was? <laughs> well, did we pass safety? The legal requirements, yes. <laughs> this thing was shaking. That was that. That made it better. <laughs> this was like vibrating. Was like, is yeah. This gonna vibrate off. <laughs> The shell's all grade five titanium, and the tooth, we have AR500 teeth and we have S7 tool steel teeth, depending on who our opponent is. The hub's just aluminum. We have a lot of titanium parts in the robot itself. A lot of the chassis is just your standard 6061 aircraft aluminum. But there's been a lot of material engineering. These wheels spin at hundreds of miles an hour, tens of thousands of RPM. So we couldn't use a regular wheel because it would expand from the centrifugal force. These are custom wheels made for us by the same company that made the wheels for a test program for the 
Hyperloop. So these are basically very fancy train wheels. So the spinning mass weighs about 23 pounds. The tip diameter is almost 28 inches. So just for reference, heavyweight emulsifier's disc was 24 inches. This is 28 inches. So it has an additional four inches of reach. At last count, I believe there were at least three to 400 separate moving parts in this robot. Not all moving. That's just the drive. Three to 400 the feet parts <laughs> in this robot. I don't know if it's going to end up being good or bad. We get the good bits and the bad bits. I apologize for breaking their cage in advance. So. <laughs> I'm more afraid of us breaking ourselves, to be honest with you. Uh, welcome to the National Havoc Robot League 2025 Open World Championship. We are in cage one, and this is a robot that has drawn a lot of attention. First true walker in the 30 pound class. This is Drift. Welding titanium takes very fine craftsmanship. When you weld, it has to be in a oxygen-free environment, so you basically have to weld it inside of an argon bubble. And when I saw this last night, I couldn't believe it was real. Gorgeous. And in Two, the other corner is Jubilee. One, fight. Jubilee Robots from Brazil. Fight. Wow, that was a quick spin-up. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh my God. gosh, the self-rider is off. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> that is the largest oh, fire that I've is ever bad. seen. We need that house oh to gosh. sneeze on that battery fire that is right by our door. And now it's just a oh roaring God. inferno. <laughs> Something fight. else just kicked up. This um, is a, another battery. They have about seven or eight pounds of battery in this robot. They're about to have none. That the, the looks like layers of the battery. I've never seen a lipo and they're turned to char that Not fast. Bad. I think our battery's in the back, but I've never seen a battery get that charged before, so. I've never seen Usually they just smoke out. I've never seen them do that. You had. It's wedged. Oh my gosh. There is something wedged in our cage. It is. Is that a battery? Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, so against Jubilee, the match started off with us trying to get up to speed. With that shell, our own power became our own worst enemy. Our torque reaction was so strong that the robot became instable and it kind of caught the floor a little bit, kicked us over into the wall. We ricocheted off the corner, we lost our masts, and then after that, once we got flipped upside down and without the mass, we were just spinning like a dreidel. We started spinning perfectly balanced inside of the <laughs> shell. And then it spun up to like a thousand RPM almost instantly from the 25 horsepower of motors we had in there. And it put about somewhere around 1500 pounds of centrifugal force on the battery door, which um, in order to save weight had been 3D printed and ejected the battery quite forcefully into the wall. When we got back to the pits and pulled Drift apart, the only damage we really had was the enclosure that holds the batteries in was a little bit melted. All 12 servos, especially all six on that side that caught fire, were still functional. The robot still could have went. It was just lost power on that one half because we have separate power systems. So against winning ticket, we tried to address the stability issues with actually programmed a delay in our transmitter to try to get the shelf speed slower so we could remain stable. Basically, we were testing it in the arena, and it turned out the delay we decided to use was too slow. I did have a manual override on the transmitter, and I used that, but by that time, winning ticket was all the way across the box on us. His wedge geometry kicked us up, and again, our instability issues kicked in, and we tipped over and we lost our mast again. Self-riding stick has come off again! Those boys better get that better attached next time. Winning tickets, party to lose now. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing the spin sort of on the inside. Oh with look, the outside you can see spinning. the little crustacean legs below. This look at the move. It's so beautiful. That shell alone weighs 22 pounds. A horrifying amount of a hardened steel as we come to its count out. Look at them dance! Knockout. Congratulations to Jeff Waters, bringing winning ticket all the way from Las Vegas. I gotta tell you, getting that close-up view of the walking mechanism yes. for everybody to see was really cool. Obviously with Drift, there's two main issues going forward. One is to fix the mast. You know, we overlooked the simple things and the complicated things ended up working good. The other big one is fixing the stability issues. We should definitely be back with Drift in 2026 and I think it's gonna be uh, a big problem. I think it's gonna put on a great show.